This is Group 1's Finger Puppet Management presentation. The summary of our TV show will be about the hardships and challenges that a manager will have to face in order to remain a dominant and successful business. Some of the terms and concepts that this TV show will utilize are operational planning, magnitude of the consequences, flat organizational structure, span of control, task differentiation. The plot of our TV show. Chris is a zombie and a general manager of a gourmet brain meal business called Brains. Brains opened up less than four months ago, and Chris is having a hard time finding capable zombie meal prepping employees who don't snack on the job. His trouble with employees has led him to become a calloused and strict manager. Stabos is the longest kept meal prepping employee and wants to ask for a promotion as additional management to Chris because Stabos believes he has demonstrated his capabilities as leader to the newer employees. However, Chris believes Stabos is needed in his current position to ensure the newer employees have a good role model. Word gets out about Stabos wanting a management position and other employees confuse this as it being there is an open spot for management. As word spreads, more zombie meal prepping employees start to reach out to Chris, hoping that they can demonstrate their skills. Chris feels overwhelmed by their outreach and lashes out by scheduling those employees less often. Kilston and Olivia and Hunter are among those who are scheduled less often. They become bitter about the topic and start plotting against Chris. They feel that they work hard and since they have had paycheck reductions due to scheduling, start to steal and consume the inventory from time to time as cons compensation. One day during lunch, Stavos, who has also experienced scheduling reductions, catches the three eating the meal prep brains. They offer him a cut of the inventory in return for not telling Chris. Stavos is uneasy but decides to agree to the terms for the time being. The next day, Chris sets up a meeting and asks about why the profits don't match up with the inventory. Stabos, as the longest working employee, is faced with the choice of following his morale and whistleblowing on the operational plot against Chris, and perhaps coming off as a hero and receiving the promotion, or choosing to remain silent and profiting feeding off the stolen inventory along with his co-workers. These are the character profiles for our TV show. Chris is the man general manager of Brains who has served the company since it opened. He has become callous to hiring, firing, promoting employees because he distrusts them due to previous experiences. He is respected by all the associates. The main concepts that he is involved in is organizational leadership, influence tactics, and incentive planning. Stabos, is the longest working employee at Brains, has demonstrated leadership to coworkers and is faced with ethical decision-making. The main concepts that he is involved with is ethics and effective leadership. Kelston, she is the second longest working employee who is very entitled and feels that she has great planning skills that could be useful to prepare meals faster. Plotting against Chris, the main concept she is involved in is strategic planning and critical incident. Olivia is a new hire and feels that she really gets the hang of the job she has at Brains and is eager to get promoted. She feels that she has done a good job of getting to know all of the employees and their trust. Plotting against Chris. The main concepts that she is involved in is critical incident and content theories. Hunter is an average employee, mother recently passed, and he is overwhelmed with debt, wants, to, wants the promotion for financial reasons. Plotting against Chris also. The main concepts are individualism and informal organization. Our target market and format. Our target audience is anyone who feels they deserve a promotion. They would want to demonstrate their qualities as a manager. 
The setting would be a small factory-like setting where each employee is generally handpicked for the contr con contributing workplace qualities. The concept of the show is to discuss ethical decision-making and proper management styles. In the story, Chris does not demonstrate fair treatment for his employees and is stubborn and closed-minded. Stabos is faced with a choice that could be detrimental to his job and seems to be tempting. It will truly show how much ethical decisions might come up on the job when it seems so convoluted by cravings to perform otherwise. Our episode breakdowns. Episode 2 demonstrates managerial and business, business ethics. Chris, the general manager, has trust issues with his current employees and is keeping a close watch on them. Lately, everyone's been asking to be promoted, however. Chris thinks nobody deserves it. Recently, the accounting books haven't been balancing correctly, and Chris thinks everyone is out to get him, and so he treats his employees suspiciously, suspecting them of continuously eating brains on the job that they are used to meal prep for clients. Stabos is the employee that has been working there the longest and is always striving to go above and beyond, trying to prove to Chris that he deserves a promotion into a management position. Chris keeps denying him the promotion. Stabos is eager for a management position and lives by the mantra of led by example, lead by example. One evening after work, Stabos overheard the other employees talking about how they are sick of being overworked and underappreciated. They all want promotions. Kilston, the ringleader of the rebel employees, came up with a plan is pitching to group is pitching to it to the group. We deserve to be paid above average, have unlimited number of brain snacks while we work, and also get a two week paid vacation every other month. Kilston shouts to the group. Hunter and Olivia both agree. Olivia counters, I agree with everything you're saying, Kilston, but what you're pitching sounds like a dream. It's never going to happen while Chris is our manager, and, it's, and so it sounds impossible. Hunter asks anxiously, well, what did you have in mind? Because I'm down for anything. Suddenly, Kilston gets an epiphany. I've got it. So Brains is a multi-million dollar company, and the CEOs don't do anything except sit at their desks getting rich while we are in the trenches doing the dirty work and still not making ends meet. To get even, <clears throat> what we will do is each day at work, each person shall smuggle 10 pounds of Brains back home in order to sell it and make extra money or even eat what we don't sell. It's only a small amount that we are taking, and it's not like Chris or anyone will notice the small difference. What do you think? Without hesitation, Hunter is in approval and can't wait for the next day he's going to take more than 10 pounds for his share. Kielston is subconsciously influenced because of her peers are doing it. And so she jumps on board. She doesn't think it's immoral since the victim is a corporation. She's just scamming the system. No one will know, and it's not going to hurt anyone, she thinks to herself. Unseen, Stabos overhears the whole scheme and urge to go participate with his peers. However, he stops his urges and thinks to himself, even though all the employees are this, does it feel right? What if everyone did this? Stabos's ethical thought process kicks in and he thinks about the golden rule. What if everyone did this action? Stabos thinks, if everyone were to smuggle goods from the company they worked at and sell it outside of work, then business would die and there would be an anarchy in the workplace. Even though tempting, Stabos makes a rational decision as to not participate in the rebellious actions. And for now, we'll pretend he hadn't seen or heard anything regarding the rebel employees. Finally, Stabos decides he needs to tell Chris about the situation. Stabos loves his job and doesn't want the other employees messing up the profits for the company. Episode 3 displays individual and group decision making.
Chris grows more and more disgruntled with himself after the last